Big changes in city government occur as a new mayor and a new city council take office. Details on this edition of Update News. Dennis P. Williams has taken the oath of office as the 55th mayor for the city of Wilmington. The Wilmington native and former city police officer had most recently served as a state representative for the 1st District. Williams, whose 60th birthday mayor, coincided with a swearing-in, officially to became mayor in a morning ceremony at the city's East Side Charter School. Today is a great day. Today is a new day. Today is my birthday. I just want to say to everyone here, this is a new day. This city will change. We will be an open government. We will listen. We will work with people. We will not put ourselves on a pedestal. And as a song that Temptations made, it's called Don't Look Back. Look for the future, because you are going to see the future in this administration. I'm not going to be a ninth floor mayor. I am going to be accessible. I'm going to be out there in the community, and I'm not going to forget the people who didn't forget me. Williams replaced outgoing mayor James Baker. The swearing in of Williams as mayor began a day of change for city government. That evening, the 13 members of Wilmington's 106th City Council took their oaths of office, including new City Council President Theopolis Gregory. I view it as being an absolute blessing to be here uh, alive and well and being able to serve the citizens of the City of Wilmington. The City Council includes six members who were not part of the previous council body. New members include President Gregory, who had served as an at-large council member until 2008, as well as 1st District Councilman Namdi Chukocha, 3rd District Councilman Darius Brown, 6th District Councilwoman Sherry Dorsey Walker, 7th District Councilman Robert Williams, and Council Member at Large Maria Cabrera. Bud Friel, who had previously been a Council Member at Large, has been elected to represent the city's 8th District. Trippy Congo, Hanifa Shabazz, Sam Prado, Michael Brown, Loretta Walsh, and Justin Wright were all re-elected to the Council. Along with the changing of elected officials comes a number of changes within the government. Police Chief Michael Zerba, who had been appointed under former Mayor James Baker, has been replaced by Christine Dunning, a 26-year veteran of the Wilmington Police Department. We have to look at new, innovative ways to approach the crime problem. I'm not saying that other old methods that we use are bad, but every city across the United States, especially uh, major uh, metropolitan cities are facing surges of violence. So essentially, we have to look at the state of the city's finances and find innovative means in order to address the crime problem. But we know the police is not the only solution. It takes great community support, and without the community, we will fail. Dunning is a lifelong resident of the city and becomes the first female police chief in Wilmington's history. Mayor Williams has appointed Anthony Good to replace outgoing fire chief Willie Patrick. This journey has come to an end, and as I take that final walk into retirement, I think of the Apostle Paul as he transitioned leadership of his ministry to Timothy. As Paul did, I turned over the leadership to, to uh, Chief Good. I wish you nothing but the best. And, and if there's anything that I can do to assist you, please don't hesitate to let me know. Thank you, sir. I am the 12th Chief of Fire to have now taken the oath. The words of that oath have been spoken during times of prosperity, yet every so often, the oath is taken amidst times of hardships and difficult operating circumstances. No matter that situation, one thing has always remained true. When the bell hits, when the alarm sounds, Wilmington firefighters respond quickly and efficiently to provide you with a service that only a few men and women were ever born to do. Good is a 15-year veteran of the department and becomes the youngest fire chief to ever serve the city. Former Chief Patrick was honored with the fire department's traditional blowing out ceremony to mark the end of his 32 years of service to the city, including the last six as chief. For more information on the changes in Wilmington City Council and in the administration of Mayor Dennis Williams, visit the city website at wilmingtonde.gov 
and click on the Your Government section. In his final days as the mayor of Wilmington, James Baker presented the details of six new housing projects that are either planned or are presently under construction in the city. We wanted to make sure that all of the detailed work was done so that you don't have all these loose ends hanging out here and the next administration then has to come in and try to make sense of it all. Uh, here these projects will greatly enhance these neighborhoods that they're coming up in and uh, actually it's, it's almost like a gift to the next administration because the, it's a fait accompli. These are projects that will come up under your administration and there's other projects that will come up. So I think the, the main thing is, is that it keeps the city moving forward, helps our neighborhoods and we have always done housing projects anyways and this is just the last of the, the Mohicans so to speak that we get this done and we just announced it and it's quite significant in the sense of 340 units for the city. The lofts at Clifford Brown Walk is an 80 unit rental project at 14th Street and Clifford Brown Walk. Christiana Square in the 200 block of South Market Street will consist of up to 63 single family homes and two apartment buildings with up to 115 units. The 3rd Street project will have four townhomes in the 1800 block of West 3rd Street. A one unit home ownership project called Xanthia's Way is being built in the 600 block of Vandiver Avenue. And Christina Overlook is a 33-unit home ownership project in the 900 block of Duncan Street. Together, these six projects will create nearly 340 new neighborhood residential opportunities in the city. Many of you know the, uh, the highest honor that any governor can give is, the, is what's called the Order of the First State. And uh, Mayor Baker has uh, more than earned uh, this honor uh, during, his, uh, during his tenure uh, in, uh, of service. And it's really of service. Uh, to the people of Wilmington and to the people of Delaware. So I have the great honor of presenting you, Mayor Baker. Baker was also honored by Governor Jack Markell for his 40 years of service to Wilmington. The Order of the First State is the highest honor the governor can bestow on a citizen. Baker said he was surprised and humbled by the award. When I walked in that conference room, which usually we meet in his office, but he said there was something going on and we couldn't go in there. But then when I saw all those people, it was a, a very nice surprise. Very, very well. Uh, it's an honor that uh, very few people get, and, I, and I'm glad to get it. And I know that we've done a good job for this city. In January, Baker completed his third term as mayor of the city of Wilmington. Despite the winter weather, Wilmington's Department of Parks and Recreation is already preparing for the summer. The Summer Youth Employment Program will begin registering city teenagers for jobs beginning February 20th at the Williams Hicks Anderson Community Center. Registration continues through April 6th with six sessions at sites throughout the city. The program provides youths with work experience and the opportunity to learn about job readiness, customer service, financial literacy, and conflict resolution. For more information about registering, or if you are a business that would like to participate in employing city youth, contact the Department of Parks and Recreation at 576-3810. The state's first 24-hour educational television channel is now available to Comcast subscribers. EdTV is broadcast from Thomas McKean High School's new communication center and can be found on channel 965 on the Comcast system. According to Red Clay School District Superintendent Merv Doherty, the channel, staffed by students, will communicate educational issues in a variety of ways. How do you help children with homework? How do you understand how to go to college? What are some of the issues facing children today? Uh, we've had partnerships with NASA already and National Geographic and National Science Foundation where they're giving us material to put on the air already ready, uh, uh, TV ready. So we're reaching out, people are responding. We think uh, this opening today, other people will respond that they want to see, they're helping our children. It's not about red clay, it's about our kids. And as long as we continue to focus on what's best for our children, it's going to be a success. Wilmington City Council approved a partnership with the Red Clay School District last April. The agreement allows EdTV to broadcast on the city's behalf as part of a franchise agreement with Comcast. City Council President Theo Gregory believes the channel will have a great impact on Wilmington's youth. I think that uh, with Twin B. Brown involved in doing workshops out of Hicks Anderson and they've talked to him, uh, we have kids who go to school here, so 
uh, our kids will get hands-on experience through those avenues firstly and then secondly uh, they'll be in the city. Red Clay will be in the city. They are part of the city. They'll be featuring things in the city also. Students enrolled in communication courses at McKean and other high schools will work with EdTV and WHMS, which is the school's FM radio station, as part of their coursework. EdTV is available to all Comcast subscribers in Newcastle County on Channel 965, regardless of the type of service you have. Third grade students from the Albert Palmer Elementary School in Southbridge were given the Little Einstein Award in the Lego Junior Challenge held at the University of Delaware. In a preview, the students showcased their skill at recreating local landmarks in a miniature Lego city. Replicas of the Newcastle County Airport, Dover International Speedway, and Wilmington Police and Fire Stations impressed the invited guests, including Mayor Dennis Williams, City Council members, and Fire Chief Anthony Good. The Lil Einstein Award, which is the equivalent to first place, was given to Albert Palmer over 40 other participating schools. Judges awarded the school for the way the students explained and built their project and in the creative manner in which it was presented. Congratulations to all the winners at Elber Palmer. Volunteers across the city celebrated the birthday of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. by giving back to their communities. Members of the Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority used the day for fellowship and service. Today is our MLK Day annual service celebration. So today we have gathered to have a Sunday supper and day of service project. And the day of service project is geared towards creating comfort covers for homeless veterans. So we assembled pillows, blankets, and sheets in a neat little bundle and sealed them with a token of appreciation, which is a postcard to tell them how much we care about them. Parkway Academy sponsored service projects that included painting a daycare and cleaning streets in the neighborhood, while residents of the city's west side marched through the community spreading a message of hope. Today's Martin Luther King Day March was organized primarily by the West Side Rose. However, it was in collaboration with St. Paul's Church and the Wilmington Peacekeepers. And it's an event we've been doing for a few years. We started it as city council members, uh, former council members Paul Lagnuto and Kevin Kelly and myself. Uh, it was sort of an, uh, an outgrowth of the West Side Crime Group. And we have been discussing ways to get the message about combating the violence and crime on the West Side. And we came up with the idea of marching on the day of Martin Luther King because Martin Luther King stood for hope and peace and overcoming the difficulties of not just urban life, but uh, everybody's life. You know, the, the crime and violence just surrounds a lot of people. So we thought, what perfect day than Martin Luther King Day in terms of trying to get the message of hope out. Because that's what it's all about. It's about hope. City Council President Theo Gregory was joined by Council Members Darius Brown and Justin Wright, along with Congressman John Carney, in kicking off the 11th annual Earned Income Tax Credit Campaign. Depending upon family size and income, individuals could receive nearly $6,000 through earned income tax credits. I want to encourage all citizens to do this, just a word of wisdom. Do not assume that you do not qualify for the free tax preparation. Come and let the program tell you whether you qualify or not. That's very important. Uh, within the city of Wilmington, uh, there are four primary zip codes, uh, as you see displayed, 19801, 19802, 19805, 19806 that are impacted by the EITC program. And uh, through those zip codes, we have nearly $9 million that come in annually here and in, back into the city of Wilmington through the EITC program. And so we're asking the residents of the city of Wilmington, uh, as, Count, as President Gregory already uh, mentioned, to please visit the earned income tax sites. Um, come here to East on Mount Carmel if you're in, uh, on the east side. Um, Come here to Eastern Mount Carmel on 800 North Walnut Street and the other six sites here in the city of Wilmington to learn how they can help you here. Um, representing the third council district, I'm asking the re residents of the third district to please visit the sites in our city to take okay, advantage of that program. Free tax preparation sites are open to assist families with filing their taxes and to determine if they are entitled to receive the tax credit. The Nehemiah Gateway Community Development Corporation has seven tax preparation locations open in Wilmington and all services are free of charge. It's kind of a no-brainer in some ways. It rewards work, it encourages people to, to have some income and th then to get 
as much as uh, close to $5,000 for some families, the average in Delaware from, uh, among the 70,000 Delawareans who do file and who do receive the EITC uh, is about $2,100. That's real money. It's real money, as uh, Reverend Johnson says, that gets uh, put back into our economy. Those individuals spend that money in small businesses and the rent, things to keep, uh, take care of their children. So it's so important for individual families, but really important uh, for our community and the small businesses and businesses that rely on uh, that consumer, uh, consumer demand. Last year in Delaware, approximately 70,000 people across the state claimed the earned income tax credit on their federal tax returns. 50 volunteers from the Honeywell Corporation helped transform a rundown city park into a new neighborhood jewel. Joined by workers from Preferred Electric and Healy Long and Jevin, the volunteers spent a day overhauling the Brandywine Mills Park in the city's third district. Based upon the geographical location of this particular park, there is not another park close enough to this immediate area where the citizens uh, could access the services that this park would have for them. There's the basketball court there. There's also a little playground for kids. That equipment has gotten upgraded. Uh, so I think in terms of the availability to the immediate community, there's nothing that could have been more efficient than this. Just fantastic job. The park off Superfine Lane had been in dire need of a makeover for a long time. With help from the city of Wilmington and Delmarva Power, workers were able to resurface the basketball and tennis courts, build new benches, and remove debris from the park's riverfront walk. The Delaware Center for Horticulture helped install new landscaping throughout the area. Honeywell, which also donated $10,000 towards the rehabilitation, worked with Rebuilding Together Philadelphia as a way to give back to the community. It's really about kind of community awareness and, and it's what can we do in the communities that we live in, uh, that we work in, that we breathe in. Uh, you forge relationships and, and it's, just, it's just a great thing to do. It's a great, as you saw the turnout today, it's just phenomenal and um, just love to see it. And this, again, I, I remarked in the smiles on people's faces, it really does, it brings a smile to your face and it's just the right thing to do for the community. Finally today, Wilmington's historic Hotel DuPont held a celebration in honor of the facility's 100th anniversary. The doors of the 12-story Italian Renaissance Hotel first opened on January 15, 1913. Exactly 100 years and countless guests later, the ornate downtown hotel marked the occasion with a ribbon cutting, carriage rides, and workers dressed in period costumes. The centennial anniversary also featured an extravagant tiered cake made for the festivities in the Hotel DuPont kitchen. That's all for today. Join us next time on Update News. Thanks for watching.